everyone, and uh, welcome to the uh, GIS Advisory Council meeting for October. Um, so this one I anticipate will be kind of quick. Um, I think mostly we just want to go through uh, all of the updates um, from the GIS office and the various working groups um, and uh, go from there. So um, I'll, uh, okay, so. Um, so we'll start out with introductions, make sure that everybody, and we'll use this as the way of taking attendance for the meeting um, of the uh, council members. Uh, we'll go through some introductory remarks, um, open it up for public comment, uh, a little bit of meeting administration. We do have a particular um, thing I want to cover and then anything else that anybody has. Uh, then we'll go through all of the priority topics and working groups as uh, for updates, and then uh, we'll kind of give our final thoughts and um, have a little bit of conversation and then we can wrap up. Um, I will say right off the bat, I am going to table the discussion on the five year plan for this meeting just because there are other things that I think I need we need to cover first, and then we will continue that discussion at the next meeting um, if that's all right with everyone. Um, so um, let's just start going through the list um, of uh, attendees um, and just kind of go down in order. Uh, I'm Alfredo Her, representing OPM and GIS office. Scott is not back online yet, but he will be soon, so we can skip over him. Uh, you're muted, Stuart. Thank you very much. Uh, hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Stuart Deland. I'm the uh, GIS Administrator for uh, Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Greg? Here, Greg Ciparelli, um, Connecticut DOT, uh, previously the Enterprise GIS Manager and newly appointed Chief Data Officer. Is Dan on? Yep, can you yep. hear me? Yep. Mm Hi, -hmm. right. uh, Dan Chaya. I'm the GIS coordinator for uh, 911 at the um, DESPP of the State of Connecticut. Uh, I'm Eric Snowden. I'm the IT and GIS manager at the Capital Region Council of Governments. I'm one of the representatives of the COGS. Gary? Yep, Gary Archambault, Department of Public Health, the agency data officer. I'm uh, Mark Hoover. I'm the GIS director at MetroCog. Ed Dimkowski, GIS analyst, Town of South Windsor, representing CCM. Uh, John Guskowski, planner with Tiger Planning and Policy Group, also representing CCM. Emily Wilson, University of Connecticut, Extension, Clear, and some other things. <laughs> Uh, Peter St. Pierre notified me he was unable to join, so we'll skip over to uh, Meg and then uh, circle back to Scott. Uh, Meg McGaffin, uh, GIS coordinator for SLR, uh, general um, uh, uh, member at large. General Assembly, I think. General Assembly, thank you. <laughs> and then Scott. Hi, sorry for arriving late. Scott Gall, Chief Data Officer at the Office of Policy Management with Alfredo and David, who I see maybe other people on the call. Thanks. Thank you. Um, so that I think is every all but one. Um, so we will definitely have a quorum and we will continue onward. Um, so as we all know, GIS Office was created in legislation last year. Um, to do all things GIS, amongst other things, and uh, uh, we're responsible for uh, any number of things, uh, mostly map related. Um, and then, so I just wanted to really kind of talk about some of the important milestones that we got going on. Um, first and foremost, aerial imagery out RFP is posted in public and people are have it in their hands to respond and hopefully we ha will have done our homework on both sides of the equation of um, you know uh, writing it at, uh, writing it well so we get good responses and then also in kind of due diligence to make sure that everybody knew it was coming so that they can respond and be prepared to respond appropriately. Um, beyond that, the next one is the broadband availability map, which is due in summer first, is very nearly done. We are planning to launch ahead of that schedule. 
um, aiming for GIS day, but you know we do are, are willing to kind of accept some flexibility there in case something goes awry, which I don't anticipate, but you never know. Um, the the next one is uh, work on the GIS clearinghouse is well underway. Um, I will be showing a sneak preview of that um, during this meeting. Um, so you guys can kind of get a sense of where we're going with it. Um, we do also anticipate that to be ready for GIS day. Um, we, sh we have a lot of data sets already kind of published um, through uh, DEEP and DOT that are, we're kind of pulling through. Um, we're working with Emily uh, uh, over at CT Eco to kind of make sure that we get all of that data integrated as well. Uh, and um, we're kind of working internally to see what data sets we publish and to get all of that up, but we can talk more about that in a little bit. And we are um, still in the process of hiring a GIS analyst, um, mostly due to some setbacks earlier in the process, um, but it is uh, things are looking pretty good so far. So um, I can talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so we'll take this time for uh, anyone for public comment. Um, if you uh, are a member of the public and would like to say something, please raise your hand and I will um, call on you to say what you'd like to say. Yes, nobody would like to say anything. Um, so we'll move on. Uh, so first, we'll do a little bit of administration um, for the advisory council meeting. Um, the first thing is uh, we are going to, I would like to have a vote for to adopt the CAMA working group that had been previously been working through the uh, Office of Intergovernmental Policy and Planning uh, here at OPM into the fold uh, under the auspices of the GIS advisory council. Um, if we could, uh, please, um, we'll go through the list, uh, uh, again in order and we'll just, uh, kind of go, I, uh, I and A, um, just to kind of produce a vote. Um, bear with me here a second while I go back to that slide. Alfredo, um, Alfredo yeah. Thad Dimkowski so moved that we uh, call for that vote. Sure. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um. All right, um, so uh, I'm Alfredo Herrera, I say aye. Uh, oh, sorry, Scott. Sorry, I didn't remember. Um, aye. All right, thank you. Uh, aye. Rick Ciprelli, aye. Dan? Dan Chaya, aye. Uh, Gary. Oh, thank you. Couldn't hear you there for a sec. <laughs> uh, Eric Snowden, aye. Mark Hoover, aye. Dad Dimkowski, aye. John? He may have stepped away, Alfredo. Okay, uh, we, we can skip over. Emily? Emily Wilson, aye. Megan McGaffin, aye. All right, thank you. Um, uh, well, even without those other two votes, I think a motion carries. <laughs> um, so we're good there. Uh, let me go back to where we were in the slide deck. Um, uh, so we are going to uh, adopt that working group under their auspices, and uh, I uh, have uh, talked it through with the current members, and we are going to appoint Mike Cowell. Uh, from Westcog as the point person on that particular working group. Um, anyone from uh, this group that would like to join um, or kind of uh, contribute, uh, please reach out to him and we would be uh, uh, glad to coordinate on that. Um, any other business, anything anybody uh, would like to talk about um, uh, and the administration of the uh, advisory council? Are you going to be adding any other working groups? Um, not at this time. Um, uh, I think we have a pretty good number and they're all kind of in the middle of doing work. So I'm a little bit hesitant to add too many. This right. is just one that previously existed and I just want to bring them into the fold, even though they were already reporting to us um, kind of as a courtesy. Great. Right. 
So I guess we will move on to the priority topics. Um, so first up is aerial imagery acquisition. Um, and uh, for that, I will call on Eric Linquist to kind of talk about that a little bit. Hi, everyone. Uh, I think everyone on the call knows who I am, but just in case, uh, I'm Eric Lindquist. I work with Alfredo in the Office of Policy and Management um, in a different division called Intergovernmental Policy and Planning. Uh, so I've been the lead, uh, the project lead for the uh, aerial imagery uh, project that we have planned for spring of next year, 2023, as well as spring of 2026. Uh, for those of you who don't know a little background on this project, we were able to fund it, luckily, uh, through uh, ARPA, uh, using um, ARPA funds uh, that are allocated for broadband. Um, so we were able to tie in um, the importance of aerial imagery, uh, base mapping, including uh, elevation data and other derivative data sets, uh, able to tie those in as important um, foundational data sets to be able to adequately map, adequately map and expand our broadband capacity uh, in Connecticut. And I see our broadband guy smiling uh, as I speak, uh, David Lukens from OPM. Um, so yeah, just a quick update. We finally got uh, the RFP posted last week. Uh, it'll be up for uh, about a little over three weeks. I believe there's a uh, submission deadline of uh, November 14th. Uh, and questions are due to OPM by uh, October 31st, and we'll be posting an addendum to the RFP uh, in early November to answer any questions that come in. Uh, the RFP was posted in um, two newspapers. Uh, it was circulated on uh, a couple listservs, including the Connecticut GIS listserv. Uh, it was forwarded along to um, uh, NISJIC for them to distribute to their uh, sponsors, uh, and it was also um, directly distributed to a um, mailing list that we maintain of uh, GIS vendor service vendors that uh, we've done business with in the past. So hopefully we'll get some good uh, responses, uh, a decent number of responses that we can have, a, you know, a competitive uh, process and get a good deal for uh, for the next uh, two acquisitions. This is the first time that we're doing this for two acquisition cycles as opposed to just one. Uh, so again, that's that's spring of next year and then spring of 2026. Um, and the second bullet, yeah, the timeline is that we hope to have our process wrapped up and have a vendor selected uh, in early December so that we can negotiate a contract, execute a contract and have them onboarded sometime in mid January. Uh, so that they, they can then begin mobilizing and doing what they need to do uh, in preparation for um, acquisition uh, in the spring. Now, there's going to be an opportunity, as there was in 2016. Um, I, I think there also was in 2019, but it wasn't as um, wasn't as significant as it was in 2016. But again, we're hoping for a uh, opportunity for anyone who's interested in buy-ups to be able to, to do that. Uh, so if there's a need for a municipality to have, say, oblique imagery uh, or to have uh, even higher resolution orthos or um, anything like that, uh, that they can work with the vendor to do that. We're gonna, I'm wor working with Alfredo uh, and others on the steering committee for this project to come up with a process that makes sense to handle the buy-ups. We, we found that in 2016, it was handled a little bit willy-nilly where um, municipalities were contacting the vendor, Sanborn, uh, directly, and we weren't quite kept in the loop as to what was happening and who was doing what. So in an effort to uh, just bring a little bit of uh, order to that process and hopefully avoid uh, unnecessary redundancies. We'll probably have a process whereby OPM gets involved as sort of a little bit of a middleman uh, for that for that buy-up process. And we'll we'll announce what that process looks like when the time comes. But just be aware of that. The other thing is that the state 
uh, OPM may opt to purchase any number of buy-ups as well uh, for statewide acquisition, depending on costs. So part of the RFP is that we have a mandatory mandatory set of deliverables. And those deliverables are, uh, you know, the high resolution orthometry, uh, QL1 LIDAR is what we're shooting for this time around as opposed to QL2. Uh, uh, contours, uh, one foot contours. Uh, this time, a new a new for this acquisition will be building footprints, uh, which we haven't done before. And I believe I'm forgetting one, Alfredo or someone who knows, what am I forgetting? I think I'm missing one. I don't have it in front of me. But um, I think the 3D terrain model. Yes, thank you. The 3D terrain model. And those constitute the core deliverables. <clears throat> and then we have a whole list that we're looking for pricing for buy up, potential buy ups. And um, I should have that. I should have prepared that list to share with folks. Perhaps I can email it out uh, to anybody who's interested. You can see it, and if you if you look up the RFP, I can just put a link to the RFP. You'll see in the RFP under the scope of services uh, the types of um, buy ups that we're looking for pricing on. And just keep that in mind uh, for those of you who uh, may represent other entities that are looking for potential buy ups. We're looking uh, to to. You know, if there's anything on that list that you see, if you're looking at the RFP, uh, if there's anything you see that you think sh should be considered that's not listed, uh, definitely let us know so that that's something we can keep in mind as we negotiate uh, review proposals and negotiate with any um, selected vendor. Um, so that's that's about it for for that uh, update. I don't know if there's any questions. I can answer any questions. I guess I must have done a good job then. I don't see any questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I should mention uh, the steering committee for this project will consist of uh, me and Alfredo at OPM. Uh, and then we have Emily Wilson from UConn, uh, Eric Snowden from Capital Region. Um, we'll have Dan Chaya from uh, Emergency Services, uh, Stu DeLand from DEEP. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna forgetting people here. Um, we have uh, Greg from DOT, Greg Ciparelli. We'll have Mitch. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mitch is also from DOT, uh, and then we have Rich Gallagher from Town of Manchester. I may be forgetting someone, but I think that's it. So that's our steering committee, uh, our group of folks who are helping to um, steer this project. As as many of you know, it's. Uh, quite an undertaking and it requires a little bit of teamwork uh, or a lot of teamwork, I should say, to get it done right. So thank you for those uh, for those names I just listed and hopefully I didn't forget anybody, but thank you to all those who are volunteering to serve on that committee because it really is uh, a big time commitment. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would also like to thank you um, for getting us over that line to get the RFP posted that constituted a huge amount of work. And I think um, I and everyone else on the advisory council will really appreciate your efforts on this. Yeah, no problem. All right. Um, if anybody has any questions, that was a good time. Otherwise, we will move on to the next topic. All right. Um, so next up is the GIS Clearinghouse um, or the uh, geospatial data. Uh, uh, portal, I think is what I'm calling it. <laughs> um, so I will let uh, Emily do a quick update on the work that the work group has been doing, and then I will show a very brief sneak preview of the site itself as it is coming along um, uh, as per our uh, work with Esri. Okay, this will be very short. Um, we basically have two our, our working group has been meeting and we, I said this in the past, we have visited almost all of the states and some major cities. And with that, found things that we really like, things we didn't like, and we are working together still on this document for our hopes and dreams of the geospatial uh, clearinghouse. Meanwhile, we shared some of our initial findings and things that are maybe the low hanging fruit that can be easily um, integrated into what Alfredo is working on with him and the team so that some of our ideas are also getting folded into this um, 
ooh, people, <laughs> this initial launch that he's going to talk about in a second. So um, we have helped as a group inform this launch and we will continue to um, synthesize our findings and uh, so forth for kind of the version two maybe down the road to put some of the um, extra decoration and functionality on um, this initial launch, which is kind of foundational is the way I'm thinking about it. Um, and meanwhile, several of members on our Clearinghouse Working Group have been working through the open data uh, tools and so forth, especially DOT Deep and CT Eco to get the existing stuff onto the Clearinghouse. So some of our Clearinghouse work time has definitely been going into that um, in recent weeks and in the next couple of weeks. So I think that's the summary. Um, feel free to add to that or Alfredo, go on to your demo, which is what we're all waiting for. <laughs> You're muted, I think. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, so here is the um, about page of the GIS Clearinghouse as it stands right now. I would show the home page, but it's in slightly rougher condition. Um, so I'm going to show the about page and one of and a couple of the partner pages that are completed, um, just so you can get a sense of kind of what um, the sorts of things that we're after on the page are. Um, so in the about page, uh, we have some site navigation. We're going to talk about what the GIS office is, contact information for uh, the folks in the GIS office. Uh, briefly give a mention about the GIS Advisory Council and link to the page on the OPM site. Um, we talk about uh, the, all of the partner um, uh, professional organizations like the GIS Network, NEARC, ERISA, and NISJIC. Um, then we talk about metadata and the importance thereof. We're going to have links to some internal resources on metadata, but then also kind of give general descriptions of what some of these um, uh, different parts of metadata are um, so that it's kind of very clear um, uh, for kind of lack of a better way of saying we kind of copied this almost wholesale from the state of Arizona site. Um, it was very, very um, well done and it was very comprehensive. So we we basically just said like, yes, we would like to adapt this for our use. So um, the, what you see here is kind of in progress of our adaptation of that. Um, uh, we are also going to have some links to uh, external resources about metadata and also general site usage on how to use our GIS hub and things like that. So, you know, people, if they need help, they they have at least the first line of um, um, kind of resource to kind of um, find things. Um, we will have a feedback survey, we will, which will go here about the site so that we can better understand who is visiting the site and and, and and what their feedback is about the site, things that work, things that don't, um, that sort of thing. We will also have a way to request data. Um, um, and we do have this um, a, as a prototype for right now already functional. So it would include things like um, the loads, apologies. <laughs> Isn't it always the case when you're in a demo? <laughs> It goes really slowly. Um, so basically, we would say, what kind of data are you looking for? Please describe it. Um, and then um, have categories and then just some demographic information about like the professional sector um, that they work in. So basically, they can write out their data to request. Categorization of that data. Um, one of the interesting things that we did was that if you select imagery data, it gives you a little notice and then link to the CT Eco site because most of that is available there. Um, so as a way of like, you know, curtailing the submission of a, uh, of a request that might not be needed. Um, um, you know, then some uh, information about where the information of the, uh, uh, where the location of the information that they're looking for and then uh, obviously contact information so that we can respond to uh, a request if we need to. Um, uh, yep. And then beyond that, we do have um, the potential of having restricted data sets, so we will have a process in place for that. Um, this part of the site is very much under construction, so I'm not really going to go much further there. Um, so first of the partner pages is deep. Um, so this is kind of what I expect the partner page, the, the key partner pages. So like the, we're talking, you know, deep DOT, CT Eco, uh, the open data portal, and then we're, we are going to have a page for other uh, partners that provide data, whether they be uh, public, private, regional, local, what have you. 
that part will likely come later, um, but it will be kind of like an aggregation of all of them so that we at least have the ability to link out to um, uh, other partners that are providing authoritative data. Um, so um, here we're going to have kind of like a featured resource, a little bit of blurb about it and a link to the application itself with a link um, to the, uh, the portal site. Um, quick information about uh, the organization and their portal, as well as um, contact information. And then we are going to have kind of like a larger card that links them out to the to their respective portals. So if I show here at CT Eco, that one's also pretty well developed at this point. Um, uh, as you can see, you know, try uh, uh, one of the things that we kind of tried to do is kind of bring in a little bit of branding of the branding of the other site into this one so that you can say, oh, so that the, the user can kind of see that, oh, this is a different organization. It still has a foothold into this site, but this is kind of like a foothold of that other portal on this site. Um, so as you can see, and then um, Kind of generally uh, the same kind of thing about CT Eco, about what they do uh, in their applications, contact information, and then we will have a link to the actual portal here as a big card that looks nice. Um, same thing with the uh, open data portal. Um, even though that's one of the Socrata site, one of the things that we did do with them is that um, they did have some statistics on the site itself. So we brought those in and were able to kind of put them as little statistics cards so that, you know, provide a little bit of extra information for uh, the user about that particular um, uh, site and uh, organization. And uh, once again, we'll have a big card down here that links out to that other site. Uh, yeah, so at this time, that's all I'm prepared to show, uh, but I would uh, I'd be happy to answer any other questions that anybody may have about it. I, is, is there a mechanism, I guess, for submitting data? If some if there's a data set that's available or that you find it elsewhere, not just like not just that data that sh would that fall under like the request data? Like if somebody had some like, is there a way to differentiate between data that I wish we had or here's some data that should be hosted or linked there or something? Um, we could potentially use that request data mechanism um, to do that. Um, uh, I think. I don't know exactly how we would implement that specifically, yeah. but I think the way we're we're planning to do it now is with uh, web hooks to kind of notify us that a request has been made um, so that we can kind of review the request, whether it is either a request for data or a, you know, I have data that I think is to the quality of being authoritative. So, you know, we can start the conversation of the process of like who's going to host it, who's going to, uh, you know, how, how yeah. it's going to uh, get integrated into this site. Um, yeah, that's that's a much larger question that is, that the I will say that the working group is definitely working on tackling in oh. their uh, recommendations document. Mm -hmm. um, so that is um, that is something that's coming, but it's not going to be available necessarily explicitly right. for launch. Um, that makes for sense. launch, I just want to get the thing up and yeah. have something for people to look at and interact with and so that we can all kind of build off of it and make something better. It looks great. It looks really great. It's very impressive. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Yeah. Are you thinking about federal partners on the other tab? Or Most likely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that is one thing that we have identified. I don't know that uh, that particular um, um, uh, like I don't know that we will have the uh, the links to the agencies specifically on the site in time for launch, but my hope is that we can aggregate at least a few of the uh, federal data sets that are already available on ArcGIS online and bring them in as a filtered view to Connecticut through our org and share them that way. Anyone else? I don't um, I don't know if it's been shared before, but I'm going to put a link in uh, the chat. You may have seen it. This is a list of open servers um, that supply mm -hmm. GIS data. So it might be if you find things or whatever, it's a good resource, um, you know, to build those um, 
views and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's definitely good. Thank you for that. Anything else? All right. Um, let me uh, pull up the. Uh, oh, I'm uh, sorry. I, did, I have one other question because I always have questions. Sure, go ahead. Um, <laughs> will you link to the. Um, would, would it be possible to put up a link to the uh, Connecticut um, GIS network? It's already there. I oh, it is there. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. I, I must have just glossed over that. Sorry about that. Yeah. So it was on the about page um, when I talk about the uh, professional uh, partners. Oh, perfect. Um, they were there, uh, NEARC and Eurisa and NISDIC are all also there. Perfect. So, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, um, if no one, if anybody has any other questions, ask them now. If not, we're going to move on to addresses and geocoding, um, which I will hand off to David Lukens to talk about because we've been making some progress on that. Howdy. Um, so in the process of broadband mapping, uh, we realized that we were missing some addresses or had some discrepancies with addresses in the different formats we have been required to match them in. Um, so we have worked with utilities to uh, incorporate their address lists uh, and build out a more complete uh, Connecticut master address layer, I think we are calling it sometimes, but I really don't like the acronym CT mall like doesn't. Doesn't do it for me. Um, so if you have any great acronym ideas, by all means, share them. Um, anyway, uh, we we have increased the number of unique locations. So by eliminating uh, units that have the same address with an appended unit or apartment, etc. Um, from about 1 million to about 1.4 million. Um, and so that is progress. I think we probably need then uh, with the units to get up to about 1.8 million. And I've started that process uh, by merging all of the newest parcel data. Uh, but that is taking a long time because I cannot do it programmatically because everything has a different name in every single parcel. Um, it makes me very sad. Um, anyway. Uh, we're we're getting there, um, and I do have a geocoder that is running off those 1.4 million unique locations. Um, I wouldn't really recommend using it for anything formal uh, at this time because I still want to do additional verification. But it has been super helpful with the broadband stuff, and I think within you know a couple months, once I have some time after the broadband things, to finish the parcel merge and add in that unit data and add the parcels as a secondary uh, geocoder, I think it will be pretty solid and uh, should be something we can share and use to improve the efficiency of all of our GIS operations. Um, also, just that, just so you know, South Windsor address data. Excellent. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, I think yeah, I don't for know, every South that. Windsor, there's uh, well, I'm not going to name any towns. Yeah, we don't, don't shame anyone, Eric. Be, be careful there, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, was there anything else that you wanted me to know specifically about addressing and geocoding, Alfredo? Are you muted? Of course. Um, <laughs> Uh, not particularly, um, just kind of want to reiterate, um, we are uh, clearly, as David just stated, working on the uh, on the topic. Um, we are planning to kind of really shore up that data set and make sure that it's accessible publicly. Once we are kind of ready, determined that that data set is ready for prime time, it will be hosted up on the uh, clearinghouse. Uh, it will likely get its own kind of topic page um, because there's a lot of background to kind of talk about and discuss with it. And then we are planning to uh, work collaboratively with um, someone, uh, another agency, likely DOT, to help us host the uh, geocoder uh, that we want to run in the interim until we can get our um, OPM and GIS office infrastructure up and ready. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, Thad, uh, you had a question? Yeah, so real quick, Alfredo, I know you and I have talked about this in the past, and uh, I want to just uh, kind of bring David on the conversation. Have we established a methodology 
or process for data update yet. Um, I know a lot of towns will update at the end of the year based on the new uh, the new camera rolls, uh, or they'll do it at the very beginning of the year. So uh, that time frame is coming up soon. Uh, just wondering if that has yet been decided. It hasn't, and I know Alfredo is working on it, but I, we we are working on developing multiple pathways for those updates to take place because it is unlikely that we will get everyone to follow one specific path. Um, I don't know if Alfredo wants to add to that. Nope, that's uh, that's about what I would say. <laughs> um, okay. Go ahead. Uh, nope. Um, the other thing that I would say is, uh, I so I do have a draft like schema for a, a very bulky version of the master address layer that would include a lot of the data from the parcels and uh, data from other data sets that we we can incorporate so that it's all there and easily available in one fell swoop. Uh, if anyone has any ideas, uh, thoughts about what that, you know, maybe where the schema should be at, probably not a good time to just like scatter plot it right now. But uh, if anybody wants to send me an email, have a separate chat about what all we want to be there, what you would really like to be able to have, like, okay, we have a simple geocoder, but then if I want to geocode something and be able to immediately access something like property values, congressional districts and the like, um, if if anybody has ideas about that and how to make that as useful for as many parties as possible, I would love to hear it. So feel free to get in contact with me. Good, thanks. Um, and then uh, the next topic is uh, broadband mapping, which is again, David, so I'll just okay. let him continue talking. <laughs> uh, so the availability map is uh, completed and updated. Uh, we got updates from all of the ISPs that offer wireline services in Connecticut uh, from their broadband data collection submissions to the FCC. Uh, so I don't know how deeply we really want to talk about this, but uh, the FCC recently changed how they take broadband data from accepting a block-based submission, like, hey, are we in the block, to now a very address-based submission. Uh, but they required that that was done in a very specific format. Uh, as a result, there will be significant uh, differences between the state broadband map and the FCC broadband map because uh, some internet service providers appear to have hired a consultant who simply used a bog standard geocoder uh, and put a 50 foot buffer around all of the address points that were known to that ISP. Uh, as you can imagine, as GIS professionals, this resulted in something that looks like a child drawing with a crayon. Um, and so it it significantly changed the uh, coverage of different ISP service areas to the extent that uh, the state of Connecticut is likely to show something like 150 to 160,000 unserved addresses, according to the FCC, uh, whereas we will have uh, a number that is less than 10,000. Um, obviously, we are still doing lots of verification on all of these things, uh, but I, it is worth noting that there will be a significant discrepancy there. There is a reason for it. Uh, I'm happy to, if anybody is super interested, uh, provide additional detail. I can't share the specific ISP related data, but I can uh, show de-identified examples or uh, explain our process versus their process, et cetera, if, if anyone is interested. Uh, but we will have our basic avail availability map is ready. I've got some swipe maps um, for, you know, looking at how different speeds have expanded in the state. Uh, you'll be able to look at how many providers there are, what the average subscription is, what the average available speed is, and then we'll have a, a dashboard or a uh, experience builder app. I, I haven't decided what is best for all of these things, but uh, that will allow you to, you know, bring in various demographic data sets and economic data sets, whether it's ACS or enrollment in the affordable connectivity program, um, all of those things that you would imagine, open UCLA data, et cetera, uh, and compare it with our own internal state data, um, which will be, aggregated to various levels above the address level because we cannot share the address level data. Um, yeah, we're, we're shooting for middle to the end of the month. Uh, 
I see both Scott and Alfredo at this time, and I know that one of them would prefer one time, one of those times, and one would prefer the other. So, <laughs> so somewhere in between them is probably what's going to happen. Um, but we will keep you updated, and it will, it will be available soon. Any any questions I can answer about any of that? Thank you, David. Um, so yes, be look out on, uh, on the lookout for that soon. Um, as you can imagine, because of all of the verification process, it will come out when it comes out. Um, so I think uh, the next topic, if nobody has any questions, would be the uh, CAMA Working Group, which we all just brought under the auspices of the uh, JIS uh, Advisory Council. And I will ask that Eric Lindquist give that update. Thanks, Alfredo. Uh, and I want to start off by thanking Mike Toll uh, for stepping up to the plate and being willing to take on this group uh, on his own. Uh, you know, for the past several years, him and I have sort of been co-leading uh, this effort, and it's been quite a quite a big lift, and it will continue to be quite a big lift going forward. So thank you, Mike, for stepping up. I'll be stepping down from this group. Uh, after the next meeting uh, convenes. And, and by way of updates, uh, there really isn't all that much uh, since the last uh, GIS Council Advisory Group meeting, um, simply because the working group hasn't been meeting through the summer. Uh, once we attained the, um, once we got to the point of collecting the 2022 data from uh, municipalities, we decided to break our, our normal meeting schedule and reconvene after the, in the fall, which is now after um, the data was uh, obtained by OPM and then reviewed, uh, and then we have something to respond to. Uh, so our actually our first meeting of the upcoming season was going to be this week, but we had to reschedule for next week. Uh, so that'll be our first you know reconvening meeting for this upcoming cycle in which we'll once again get back to a regular meeting schedule, start reviewing the data that came in, identify issues that need to be resolved for the next collection cycle, and continue working on, on you know, the next steps, if you will. Uh, we already have uh, compiled a, a number of things to work on. Uh, the, the last that we called the, the current schema, the current standardized camera report, we're calling it our version five, and version six will be next year, which will include, um, you know, additional uh, modifications, if you will, to make the data even more standardized and even better and more consistent. And that involves working with not only municipalities and municipal assessors, but uh, the CAMA vendors that are hired by the towns. So it's it's definitely, you know, that that ends up being the big challenge because you have to work not just with 169 assessors, but these private companies that aren't getting compensated for the work you're asking them to do. Uh, so, so that's about it. Um, uh, I want to uh, also give a big thanks to David Lukens and and the GIS office for his um, the, his time and effort that he's put into uh, evaluating a lot of the data that have come in. It's uh, it's quite quite a bit of data for those of you who work with it. Uh, and it takes time to go through it town by town and, and identify issues. And David's been spending a lot of <laughs> a lot of time. I don't think that guy sleeps, but he's been spending a lot of time writing scripts and everything else to, to help us uh, go through it a little more clearly. So thanks, David, for that. Um, I'm going to be working with uh, COG staff uh, going forward, getting them ready for the next uh, CAMA work group effort, if you will, and identifying where we found issues in the 2022 collection. And just so you know, um, the, the, the 2022 data has not yet been posted to the website. We have a notice on our page saying that if you want the data to contact me and I'll send it to you. And that's simply because through David's analysis, we found uh, qu quite, a, quite a bit of issues with some of the data that we're still trying to resolve. So uh, we'll, be posting, we'll be posting what we have, the best of what we have uh, in the next couple of weeks. But for now, it's been a you have to reach out to me to request the data so that I can inform you of, of, of what problem areas in it. Um, we found that was probably the best approach to take for the interim. 
but uh, that's about it for that group. Um, uh, any questions? Um, Go ahead, Eric. I just I just had a couple of comments. One is that uh, hearing David talk about knitting all that stuff together with my experience with the the town with all the towns in my region, you know, multiplying that by many times. Uh, I have hives now, so. Um, and also, I just want to say, uh, 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 Eric Lindquist, uh, just how much. The whole process and the you know homogenizing of the camera stuff the dramatic amount that that's improved over the last couple of years i mean last year was a huge step forward you know i'm sure a lot of you folks have heard this from me before but um <clears throat> and i'm sure it's only going to get easier i mean the the response we got last year was such a dramatic improvement from the year before um and hopefully the you know the, and it seems like the um the standard exports from all the different camera systems um that's finally you know really kind of took some shape this last year and you know and, and i'm sure it will continue to improve but you know many thanks yeah that's a good point eric and to that to that end i i want to say i think you're the only cog representative on the call right now but um no, i think it, I think Matt, uh, I think Mark uh, Hoover's here, Mark. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, so so you and Mark and, and all of your peers, um, you know, this is not an insignificant effort on the part of the COGS as well. Um, we rely, we've relied on the COG GIS staff, um, yourselves and your peers to to really, uh, you know, take the reins on this and really be the point of contact with all of the towns and work through you know, work with them through their issues, through their questions to get these data and then compile it all and submit it to OPM in in, in a nice uh, package. And uh, I just want to put a shout out to you guys for, for all of your efforts. We've, for those COGS that haven't had um, continuity with regard to GIS staffing, that's where some of our trouble spots have been, such as the Northwest Hills, They've lost their GIS capacity there. They're trying to to rebuild themselves now. So that's been a little bit of a trouble area. Um, for those of you who don't know, Liz Crutcher is no longer at CCOG. So uh, so that's, you know, we're going to be rebuilding a relationship there. So keeping those relationships with the COGS going has is, is really been a, a crucial part of this. And I just don't want it to go unknown how much how much work that is uh, on, at your level as well. And yeah, I mean, I just wanted to echo Eric real quick, uh, Snowden, um, <laughs> that, you know, this year it was a lot easier getting it together. Um, I know in years past trying to get those camera extracts from all the assessors took a while, but, you know, this year it was all the assessors provided their extracts, you know, quicker than I got the GIS data. And previously in the past, it was the other way around. Um, so hopefully that that'll, you know, keep getting easier uh, as we move forward. Thanks, Mark. And one one last point. I, I I was debating in my mind whether to um, say this or not, but um, I I feel like uh, you should all know uh, I'm I'm giving away or I'm stepping down from this work group because I'm actually going to be leaving OPM. I'm taking a new job, and uh, some of you already know this, and others didn't, so it might come as a surprise. But um, <laughs> I see some reactions, but. Uh, don't worry. Uh, everything's going to be OK. I'm still going to be part of the community. I'm not going far. So uh, I, just, I figured I would just um, let you guys know this is this will be my last advisory group meeting representing uh, OPM. I saw on the list that there's a General Assembly vacancy. I don't know if you're going into that field or whatever, <laughs> but I'm just yeah. saying, you know, if you want to come back, you know, there's room on the list. I am. Uh, I'm going to the Department of Public Health. Oh, that's awesome. They have nice people over there. Yep. Good so for you. A new adventure. Eric, you will be missed, my friend. You will absolutely be missed. Thanks, Thad. Are you um, still doing GIS or is it more leaning oh. on your environmental experience? Uh, I'll still be uh, I'll still be in you know I'll be doing some GIS for sure. Um, I I don't think I'll be as involved in 
some of the administrative uh, work that OPM and the GIS office is now undertaking, but um, I'll, I'll still be nonetheless involved in GIS and part of the community. So awesome. Um, so I, I won't be disappearing off the face of the earth or off the map, Good. so to speak. <laughs> no pun I intended. It. I get <laughs> it. It's going to approve the septic system Oof. for Jennifer's shed out there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, are there any more questions uh, on the camera working group? All right. Um, I guess we can move on to the next topic, which is the parcel drafting standards uh, working groups. Um, if uh, Thad would be so kind to give an update. Sure. Uh, so we've met several times. Uh, we continue to meet. Um, we've taken the parcel data drafting standards document and split it up based on various tar, uh, topics. Each of us has kind of taken a chunk of it so it's not resting on one individual's shoulders. Uh, we've, we've gotten along quite well uh, with regards to progress. Uh, I would say that uh, very likely before uh, the end of the spring, let's say, giving us some breathing room just to refine uh, and pretty up the, uh, the final resulting document. Uh, but the content is coming along together very, very well. Uh, we've been able to uh, rely on some of the work, the valuable work that was done by previous groups with regards to the, the, the data standards, uh, and we've been very grateful for, those, uh, for the work done by those previous groups. But uh, in general, the content is coming along very, very well. Um, we've got a rock-solid foundation uh, and the input from the members, many of whom are here on this call, uh, has been, been fantastic. So we'll be meeting again uh, actually at the end of this week uh, tomorrow, uh, and uh, we'll continue our work. But uh, look for something from us, uh, as I said, before the end of next spring. Uh, that gives us some time just to pretty up and, and make sure that uh, typos and, and uh, imagery and all those kinds of things, the images we're using, uh, are all prettied up and presentable so that when we present it to the uh, the GIS community at large, it's something that we can all be proud of, uh, and uh, and I look forward to that. So that's uh, that's currently where we stand. All right, thank you. That's great. Um, any questions on this topic? Nope. All right. Well, um, last topic, and I'm not going to bring up the slide for this because it's just kind of like. Um, a general update. Um, so GIS office is in the middle of uh, hiring a GIS analyst. Um, as a matter of fact, we are actually hiring two GIS analysts uh, from this recruitment. Um, and we are working on a, a uh, description for a more senior position. So we are anticipating that the GIS office will ultimately be four to five people. Um, which is going to be great, and we should have uh, quite a bit of capacity to help out with lots of things. Um, beyond that, um, the, our work with the DOT with the administrative boundaries improvement um, is ongoing and is coming along nicely. I've seen some of the drafts and, uh, and their team over there is doing a really great job. Um, as soon as that layer is done, we're going to share it out and want to replace the existing layer in as many places as possible. So. Um, uh, as I've mentioned in other groups, I would really appreciate um, this group's help in kind of uh, distributing that uh, updated data set as many places as we can, both up and down um, the uh, governmental level, if you will. Um, I'm going to do my best to see how, you know, if we can push it up to the feds and then obviously lean on the, uh, the, the COGS and the local and representatives to help us integrate it into um, the, the regional and local level, because um, I think that's going to be a very important thing that we do. Um, there are some logistics that um, will likely uh, be recommendations based on the stuff that Thad's group is producing um, that will play in, uh, a factor into this. And then, um, and then uh, also uh, possibly some of the stuff with the, uh, the CAMA and all of that um, parcel data will have to eventually um, Kind of start to work towards alignment with that updated layer so that we can all work off of the same date base data set. Um, I think those are the uh, the the big kind of other highlighted uh, uh, updates from the GIS office that didn't quite fit into another category that I have. Um, 
And uh, with that, I, I think we're pretty much at the end. If anybody has any additional thoughts or comments or things that they want to talk about, um, and um, also uh, any member of the audience or, or the public that wants to make a comment or has a question, is now's a good time to ask. Uh, go ahead, Ted. Yeah, Alfredo, I just wanted to uh, follow up on something. Um, not long ago, uh, a group had been assembled of GIS users at the state level. Uh, I attended the very first meeting, um, and uh, I was just wondering if that the meeting of those individuals uh, has continued uh, to eliminate some of the silos that we see within a state government between the various organizations and departments. Uh, and uh, if so, if they have been kind of kept in the loop on some of the things that we've been talking about here, just as a general, uh, for your information. Uh, not as of yet. We've that group has met once, and um, and have been had a preliminary kind of con introductory conversation with that. Um, but uh, that is uh, something that is high on my agenda to continue um, and incur and encourage the uh, expansion of the participation of those folks to kind of make sure that. Um, at least those of us that work across state agencies um, can work together in a in a more seamless way, if you will. Um, you know, rules uh, <laughs> within the context of the rules that we have in place. But yes, uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, although no, we have not met recently. We do plan to continue uh, meeting, and I just you know have to get that going again. Anything else? I have, I have a quick question. Are, how are, how is um, do you have any insight on how this office is is functioning? Are things going the way that you intended? I know this is all like a new you know a new thing. Um, you know there were issues in the past in terms of you know administrative help, IT help, things like that. Are you fine? You know are there struggles or things that you need assistance with or advocacy for or things going the way that you had hoped or do you want to have the conversation another time i'm just you know or maybe just kind of put your thoughts because a lot of us work together we want to support yeah. you and make oh, sure yeah. that this is a success um so if you want to maybe even just think on that for future discussions or whatever yeah. uh, i'm just interested in making sure that this is going you know the way it needs to go and that you have the support and you know, because we all are here to support this, the function of this office. Uh, yeah, no, um, I guess I will give a quick answer, but yes, I would like to discuss this further at another time. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's um, a big so, question to ask off the cuff. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, so I think um, for my kind of quick, brief, you know, off the top of my head answer, I think things are progressing nicely. Um, I always en envision this from the moment it, the, I saw the job posted. I knew this was a big job and it was going to take multi years of effort yeah. to kind of um, execute. Um, but so far, I would say that we are getting um, the, the, the key support that we need, both from the professional community as yourselves mm -hmm. um, and uh, also from, you know, the uh, infrastructural. Uh, and by that, I mean the agency infrastructure uh, administratively, we are getting the support that we need. Um, right. You know, some areas are moving faster than others and some projects are moving faster than others. Um, but kind of looking back on the progress that we have made in the now almost exactly a year since I was notified that I got this job, um, we are, um, I feel like we've done a lot, even though it yeah. at the same time feels like we haven't. <laughs> um, um, it's one of those things because so many things are in progress and are moving along. But, um, you know, the fact that we are very close to publishing a, uh, the GIS Clearinghouse, the fact that we are very yeah. close to publishing the broadband availability map, um, the fact that we've made progress on, um, you know, cre uh, improving the address point layer um, that, you know, that is kind of needed, um, you know, it was fairly okay to begin with. It was pretty good. And Dan yeah. has done a marvelous job maintaining it with the resources he's had. Um, but, you know, we just need to be able to kind of push it a little bit further. And we've been trying, we've been able to make, move the needle on that, so to speak. We've, oh, yeah. um, 
uh, the, pro the, the efforts of the camel working group are invaluable, you know, so things are progressive and, and, and I think they're just going to get better from here. Um, so, uh, I think we are moving as I expected, um, something, like I said, some things are slower, some things are faster. Um, but I think overall we're in a very good place. We have still have a lot of momentum and support from both the professional community and from the, um, inter-agency community um, to kind of get our work done. Um, so I think it's just continuing to press and push on that kind of collaboration and enthusiasm is going to be key going forward. Um, but yes, I would definitely welcome a, a longer conversation. And I think this also plays into um, the, the, the larger conversation of what we want to do and develop the five-year plan. I think that's going to be kind of a focus um, of mine for the next council meeting um, uh, because I would like to have that done sometime in the late spring, um, early um, early summer to make sure that we can have that in place and because that is a, um, a stated objective of this group from the legislature. Um, so that is something that we do need to tackle. And I think um, part of the reason I've wanted to push that off a little bit is because I've been having to get my feet out, uh, uh, under me first. Uh, we have to know what we got to deal with and what some of the moving pieces are uh, so that we can then really kind of get into the nitty gritty of, okay, now that we understand kind of where we're at, where I understand where we're at, and um, that way we can have a more informed conversation about how we move forward and how we make this look like what we all envision it and want it to be. Awesome. Good. I think you're doing a great job. This is an absolutely ambitious, huge endeavor. So I'm glad that, you know, it's going so well. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, thank you. Um, uh, I guess the uh, the only other topic, um, and I probably should have done this um, during the administration uh, of the, the council, I would like to propose that we shift the schedule of the meetings back a month because the next one would be the last Thursday in December, which puts us pretty much right around Christmas, which no one would want to attend. Um, so I think that we should shift the uh, meeting schedule back a month and then just continue that cadence going forward. That way we don't kind of run afoul of that particular uh, end of the year craziness. Um, I, if you want to do a formal vote, we can do that. If not, I think we can just kind of all agree and move on. <laughs> Yeah, I have no objection. All right, so I will adjust the schedule accordingly. Um, and. Uh, uh, well, I guess we'll hit Thanksgiving instead if we do that. Well, we'll figure that part out. <laughs> we might just uh, adjust the last one of the year to kind of uh, sit a little funny, but then uh, beyond that, uh, I think I like the idea of shifting it back a month and then uh, having the next council meeting be in January um, and then um, every other month from there with uh, figuring something out logistically for uh, November, December timeframe. Thank you, David, for the reminder. <laughs> All right, um, I guess that's all I have. Unless anyone has any additional questions, I move that we adjourn. Removed. All right, well, thank you all for attending. Um, it was a really good conversation and I appreciate all of your time and effort on all of this. Thank Thanks, you. Alfredo. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every house looks great, man.